What's going on, everybody? Scott, I'm coming at you. We're here in the studio. We're going to help you fix duffing chip shots because it is an absolute score killer. As somebody that's gone through some chipping yips and things back in the past, and now I think I've gotten rid of them, I want to help you get through that because I know how painful it can be. So let's jump right into it. So when we get into this, when we start looking at chips here and trying to stop duffing them, you're gonna see I have a pressure plate out here. So what I see when people are duffing chips is there's a couple of things. One, they're trying to help the ball in the air too much. So what ends up happening is if you have a chip, let's say with rough or you know kind of softer turf or even firmer turf, just all of the above, you are trying to help the ball in the air. So what happens is you end up hitting the ground way behind the ball and it really slows things down. You're not swinging very fast at this shot, and so you're gonna get killed by, hey, I get hit the ground, it's gonna take all the speed off of the club. So what we need is, we need to start coming into the ball on a little bit of a descending blow. We wanna feel like we're going down into the ball a little bit and letting the club travel down to the ball. Doesn't have to be a lot, but it just has to be enough so we don't catch that ground super early where it's gonna really slow things down for us. So what I'll have people do is get on the pressure plate and the way we control how we're gonna hit down, I don't wanna see people just lift the club up and chop down because you're gonna just slam it into the ground. What I wanna see you do is we can create a downward angle or descending blow by just taking the center of our body and moving it forward. By doing that, I've angled everything and now I'm gonna just barely be swinging down at the golf ball and that's gonna be enough for this type of shot, for your basic kind of chip shot. If you're working on US Open Rough, we might need to do a little bit more adjusting for that. But if I can do that, then we're gonna typically be able to get the club to meet the golf ball and be able to pop it up in the air. So what I'll typically have people do is just get on the board again, lean it forward, everything's kind of in front of the ball. And then what we'll do is just hit a shot or two where we just feel like we're staying forward, okay? Hey um, and that way they can feel that club kind of pop into the golf ball. When they do that as well, what will end up happening is they can feel that club want to keep going through the ball instead of just kind of jabbing at it at the golf ball. But if they have that kind of jabby motion, that's where we move into kind of the second thing that we like to see, which is I like to see a little bit of pivot towards the target. So what I'll typically see people do is even if they're leaning forward a little bit, they kind of just jab at it with their hands and their arms. Now, your hands and your arms are great for hitting the ball far, but we're not trying to do that here. We're trying to hit the ball very soft, keep it under control. So what I want to do is actually control how far this ball goes by moving my body. My body moves slower than my hands and arms. So if I just go back and through with my body, I'm not going to move the club fast, but I can keep it moving so I don't get caught up in any ground or duff the ground, anything like that, right? So what I'll typically have people do is just make a few motions where again, we're leaning forward, they'll go back and through and just feel like they're finishing on that front foot and that body is moving to the target. Now, when they do this, if you see a little bit of a shift back and then you go through, that is actually okay. You just gotta make sure you, if you shift back a little, you do have to get forward and turning your body through. So it might overcomplicate things a little bit, but if it works for you, it is something you can do, all right? Now, let's see what that's gonna look like here. I'm gonna just put a little pivot in here. So again, I like to see we're forward, we're gonna turn and let that club brush the ground as we do it. Okay, something like that. Pretty good, ball's off, very, very controlled and I'm able to get the ball through any tough conditions, anything like that, that would slow us down or cause us to duff it. Now, the last thing that people do that cause them to duff chips, this has a little bit to do with setup and how the golf club works, okay? So when we're looking at a golf club, we have the club basically for a wedge has two parts. You have what's called the leading edge, which is on the front, basically just under the bottom groove, right at the front of the golf club. That edge is exactly what it says it is. It's an edge, it's meant to dig. So it's going to cut into the ground. When you're hitting a full shot, you're gonna use that. You're gonna hit the ball and then take a divot. When we are hitting a chip, we do not have enough speed to be able to hit the ground and have it dig. If that happens, 
we're going to have the club just stop in its tracks and the ball is going to go nowhere. What we actually would have to do, if you're going to play with the leading edge, what you end up having to have to do is you have to make sure you strike the ball first. But when you do that, the ball actually comes off really, really hot and it's hard to control. So what I like to see people do is start working with the bounce, okay? You wanna get the club set up so the back part of the club, all the way on the back here, is the part that's going to hit the ground. So what that means is, when we're set up, I don't wanna do the old school, this is how I learned golf too, which was hands forward and like just do this. It's terrible for chipping, especially with the new clubs and the way agronomy is nowadays. You get on any type of thin or tight lie, you're gonna be in real big trouble. You need to get the wedge set up so that the club is more leaning back almost, or just straight up and down. And our goal is to try and have the club return to the ball looking straight up and down. Okay, that's going to engage the bounce. I said it earlier, if you hit the ground with a proper technique slightly early, you actually still can get away with the shot. And I'll, actually sometimes pros do it almost on purpose because they are really trying to be touchy and slow the ball down. I'm not gonna say you should do that. We wanna just make good contact and get it on the green. So I still think you wanna to try to hit the ball first, but it's nice to have that little cushion and that little safety net of, hey, if this doesn't work, I can bounce it a little bit and I still will hit a probably a pretty reasonable shot that will get up there and it might still turn out pretty good. So again, just more of that you know, handle straight up and down. We're gonna do our little pivot. And I'm going to try to return the handle where it looks straight up and down. Okay. And you can see I hit the ground a little bit there. Ball still comes out nice and high and it's soft. It's not going to be as perfect as I want it to be, but it's still a good shot and I have a chance to get up and down. So again, it's nice to have that safety net so we don't have to always be super perfect when we're going to hit those shots. So that's a big part of the game. Got to have that short game. You got to stop duffing chips. You got to get the ball on the green and then start getting it close to the hole to break down your scoring barriers. Again, something that I want to help you do. So make sure you check out, we have our free breaking 90 plan. You can check that out in the links in the description. It's 100% free and it's going to give you a plan of what you need to be practicing, what I've done with people to help them break that magical barrier in record time. So make sure you do not miss out on it. Again, 100% free. Thanks everybody for watching and we'll see you in the next one.